Hi, I'm Guillermo and welcome to my presentation on Revisiting RCC Security and Replay Protection. This is joint work with Christian, Willie and Christopher. So, security notions are usually designed with concrete applications in mind. However, they often do not match the exact security requirements of their intended applications. So, what is their purpose? For example, what is the purpose of CC2 security for PKE schemes? On one hand, we know that CC2 security is sufficient to achieve confidential communication. However, there are also non-CC2 secure schemes that also allow for this type of communication. The same happens with RCCA security. So RCCA security is a relaxation of CC2 security. Relaxation in the sense that, on one hand, it is implied by CC2 security. On the other hand, it does not imply CC2 security. So, as I was saying, in RCCA security is necessary to achieve confidential communication. Actually, it is also sufficient to achieve confidential communication, but it is only so if and only if the message space size is large. For small message space sizes, in RCCA does not capture non-malleability, which is a requirement for confidential communication. This means that, in general, in RCCA does not capture confidential communication. So, in this work, we identify technical inconsistencies with existing game-based security notions, namely in PDRCCA and in SDRCCA security. We show that they are not implied by CCA2 security for the case of probabilistic decryption, and this actually contradicts a claim made in earlier work. And furthermore, they have no known operational meaning. So, this diagram represents the previous diagram of in CC2 and in RCCA, but now it is two new notions. So, these notions in PDRCCA and in STRCCA security were supposed to be between CC2 and RCCA security. However, as we show in this work, in CC2 does not imply in PDRCCA security. As it turns out, it does not even imply the weaker in STRCCA security. In this work, we clean up the space of game-based security notions for capturing confidential communication. And we do so by following a systematic approach for characterizing security using a composable framework. Essentially, we define different applications of PKE schemes as benchmarks, which are composable security notions, and then use these benchmarks to assess whether game-based security notions capture the intended application. So we consider three benchmarks, the first corresponding to the confidential communication I was referring to just before. This benchmark is taken from earlier work. The second benchmark is a variant of confidential communication, but where this time the receiver can filter out ciphertext replays. The third benchmark is yet another variant of confidential communication, but where this time a third party can perform the ciphertext replay filtering. So, we introduce these benchmarks and for each one of them we introduce a game-based security notion capturing the benchmark. For the first benchmark we introduce initial RCCA security, for the second SRP RCCA security and finally for the third PRP RCCA security. For each of these notions, we show that they capture the intended benchmark. In this presentation, we are not going to capture benchmark 3, nor in PRP RCCA security. Finally, in this paper, we give a full characterization of our game-based security notions. We show that they are correctly placed between CC2 and RCCA security, and we also give all possible relations within all our game-based security notions. 
so we prove all possible implications and all possible separations between the notions. Ok, with this, let's go into some preliminaries. First, let's go over preliminaries about PKE schemes. So, a PKE scheme is just a triple of PPT algorithms, and for correctness, we require that for any adversary A, the adversary cannot output some message such that for this message, encryption and decryption do not work correctly. Now, we are going to introduce a generic game based security notion X. So, a PKE scheme Pi is in X secure if no efficient distinguisher can tell with which system it is interacting with, G0 or G1, and we will define these systems in the next slide with non negligible advantage. So, the game systems are defined as follows. Initially, the game system generates a public secret key pair using the key pair generation algorithm of the PK scheme and send the public key to the distinguisher. There is a first decryption stage during which the distinguisher can ask for decryption of ciphertexts. The game will then decrypt the ciphertext that the distinguisher asks to decrypt and send the resulting plain text back to D. Then, there is a challenge stage, during which the distinguisher can simply ask the game to encrypt one of the two test messages and exactly what test message is encrypted depends on the game that the distinguisher is interacting with and the game will encrypt one of these messages and reply with a ciphertext back to the distinguisher. This ciphertext, which we hear with the note by C star, is called the challenge ciphertext. Then, finally, there is a second decryption stage. During this decryption stage, the distinguisher can ask the game to decrypt, well, for ciphertexts again, but this time the game might actually refuse to decrypt some of these ciphertexts. The decision whether to refuse to decrypt or not is done based on some predicate PX, which is defined by the game based notion itself. Essentially, if this predicate outputs 1, then the game refuses to decrypt the ciphertext that C submitted, and otherwise, the game decrypts the ciphertext and outputs the message back to the distinguisher. Ok, so let's just see a couple of examples of such predicates. So, for example, for CC2 security, we could define the predicate as just checking whether the ciphertext that the distinguisher is asking to decrypt matches the challenge ciphertext. For RCCA security, we could, define the, we could define the predicate as just checking whether the ciphertext decrypts to one of the two test messages. Essentially, for some security notion X, this predicate PX can be interpreted just as defining what the security notion considers to be a replace of the challenge ciphertext. So, then, the games defined by this security notion simply do not allow the distinguisher to obtain decryptions of replace of the challenge ciphertext. Ok, now let's go into some preliminaries about channels. We consider four types of channels in this work. Two of them are very similar. The first one is the insecure channel. Whenever Alice inputs a message M into the insecure channel, this message is simply output to Eve. Whenever Eve inserts a message M star into the insecure channel, this message is simply output to Bob. In the authenticated channel case, things are a bit different. Whenever Alice inputs a message, this message is immediately sent to both Eve and Bob. It is authenticated because only Alice can input messages into the channel. Finally, we have the, re the confidential channel and the replay protected confidential channels. Here, whenever Alice inputs a message M, Eve only gets to see the length 
of M. If can either choose to deliver the jth message that Alice input, or it can inject some new message M prime into the channel. Depending on what if does, Bob then gets a message M tilde output at its interface. What is the difference between confidential and replay protected confidential channels? Well, the difference is that confidential channels allow for replays and confi replay protected confidential channels do not. But what does this mean? Essentially, each deliver query for the jth message that Alice sends in the confidential channel case is processed, causing the jth message that Alice sent to be delivered to Bob. In the replay protected confidential channel, this is different. So only the first query to deliver the jth message that Alice sent is processed. Later queries for the same J are simply ignored. With this, we can now go to the benchmarks. The first benchmark captures confidential communication. Essentially, in the real world, we have two resources, an authenticated channel from Bob to Alice and an insecure channel from Alice to Bob. Alice runs an encryption protocol and Bob runs a decryption protocol. Initially, the decryption protocol generates a public secret key pair and sends the public key over the authenticated channel to Alice. Of course, this public key also leaks to Eve. Whenever Eve Sorry, whenever Alice inputs some message into her encryption protocol, the encryption protocol simply encrypts this message using the public key, outputting some ciphertext through the insecure channel. Eve then sees this ciphertext and can choose to inject some ciphertext C' prime into the insecure channel. The decryption protocol run by Bob will then try to decrypt this ciphertext C' prime and if it is a valid ciphertext, it will output some message M tilde to Bob. In the ideal world, we have a confidential channel and we also have a simulator sigma. Initially, the simulator generates a public secret key pair and outputs the public key to Eve. Whenever Alice inputs a message M, the confidential channel only leaks the length of M to the simulator. The simulator then somehow has to generate a ciphertext C and send it to Eve. Whenever Eve inserts some ciphertext C' prime into the simulator, the simulator will choose to either deliver some message or inject a new one into the confidential channel. And again, depending on what the simulator does, Bob will get some message empty output at its interface. We say that benchmark 1 is achieved if the real world and the ideal worlds are indistinguishable. Ok, so now let's go into benchmark 2. The main difference is that, well, now the decryption protocol has an additional memory resource which it can use to store, well, ciphertext that it has already decrypted and output to Bob. Essentially, everything else works as before except that now, whenever Eve inserts some ciphertext C' prime into the insecure channel, the decryption protocol then checks into its memory to see if it has processed any related ciphertext and, well, if it has, it simply ignores C'. Prime. Otherwise, it will store C' prime into its memory resource, it will decrypt C' prime and output it to Bob. Ok, in the ideal world everything is as before except that the confidential channel is replaced with a replay protected confidential channel. Again, we say that benchmark 2 is achieved if the real and ideal worlds are indistinguishable. Now let's see why in RCCA security is not sufficient. So recall how the predicate for the security notion is defined. Essentially, it just outputs one if and only if the ciphertext that the, the distinguisher is asking to decrypt decrypts to one of the two plain texts, to one of the two test messages. 
So, I would like to highlight that the confidential channel requires non-malleability. And this is so since, well, if can only first learn message lengths sent by Alice. Second, it can forward the messages that Alice sends to Bob and finally it can inject new messages and prime into the confidential channel which are then output to Bob. But since Eve does not know any of the messages that Alice sends, it simply cannot insert or cannot really interfere with well the messages that Alice is sending. In particular, it cannot take one of the messages and transform it to in, into another related one. So essentially this confidential channel really captures non-malleability. However, there are malleable PKE schemes that are in RCCA secure. And this is so since if you consider the binary message space, then well the second decryption stage does not really help in distinguishing well G0 from G1. So even if a PK scheme is mo uh, malleable, a distinguisher cannot take advantage of the second decryption stage and because of that cannot take advantage of the malleability of the PKE scheme to manage to win the security game. Ok, now that I explained why in the RCCA is not sufficient to achieve benchmark 1, let's actually achieve benchmark 1. So, we introduce INCL RCCA security to achieve benchmark 1. We say that a PKE scheme PI is INCL RCCA secure if, well, there is an efficiently computable predicate V such that no efficient distinguisher can distinguish if it is interacting with G0 or with G1 with non-negligible advantage. The predicate for this security notion is defined as follows. So it outputs 1 if and only if well, first, the ciphertext that he is asking to decrypt is related according to V to the challenge ciphertext, and furthermore, it also decrypts to the same as the challenge ciphertext. Notice here that the distinguisher is not given Oracle access to V, and the goal of V is to disallow strategies that could win the security game but would not really uh, help in breaking confidentiality. Checking whether the uh, ciphertext that the distinguisher is asking to decrypt really decrypts to the same as the challenge ciphertext is key to ensure that no meaningful molding attacks, attacks are being disallowed by the game. So, we show that in CLRCCA achieves benchmark 1 for a single message. And we also show for that for the end challenge version of in CLRCCA achieves benchmark 1 for n messages. So, we introduce in CLRCCA and we show that it captures benchmark 1. And now one could ask, well, is in CLRCCA also sufficient to achieve benchmark 2? Or, in other words, does in CLRCCA capture replay protection? Well, we could not prove this. And that is for two main reasons. First, recall that V takes as input the secret key. Since the game does not give Oracle access to V, then how could the reduction check if two arbitrary ciphertexts are replaced of one another? The second reason is that, actually, V might not even compute an equivalence relation. So it's not clear whether V could detect, detect certain replays. Ok, so to achieve benchmark 2, we introduce int SRP RCCA security. We say that the PK scheme PI is int SRP RCCA secure if there is an efficiently computable predicate V satisfying two conditions. First, for each key pair in the support of the key pair generation algorithm, V must compute an equivalence relation over ciphertexts. Second, for each key pair in the support of the key pair generation algorithm, 
And for each ciphertext C and C prime, if V declares this ciphertext to be related, then they must carry essentially the same information. What does this mean? Well, it means that the decryption, the statistical distance of the decryptions of C and C prime, must uh, must be uh, negligible. Okay, so a PK scheme pi is in the RPRCCA secure if there is an efficiently computable predicate v satisfying these two conditions, such that no efficient distinguisher, which is given oracle access to v on any pair of ciphertexts and throughout the entire game can distinguish if it is interacting with G0 or with G1 with non-negligible advantage. For this security notion, the predicate is simply defined to be V. So, we introduce in this RPR CCA security and we show that it captures benchmark 2. Here, predicate V can be used by the decryption protocol for detecting and thus also filtering out ciphertext replays. To achieve benchmark 3, which we did not introduce in this presentation, we introduce in PRP RCCA security. This security notion is defined very similarly to int SRP RCCA security. The main difference is that now predicate V is not given the secret key. So we introduce in PRP RCCA security and we show that it captures benchmark 3. The predicate V, given by the in PRP RCCA security of a PK scheme, can be used for detecting and, and filtering out ciphertext replays. Finally, we give all possible relations between our game-based notions. We show that CCA2 implies PRP RCCA security, which implies SRP RCCA security, CLRCCA security, and finally, in CLRCCA security implies in RCCA security. Regarding separations, we also show that in RCCA security does not imply in CLRCCA security, which in turn does not imply in SRP RCCA security, in PRP RCCA security, and finally, in PRP RCCA security does not imply in CCA2 security. For more details, please have a look at the paper, which is available on ePrint. Thank you for your attention.